Hi, lovely humans. My name is Emily. It is an honor to welcome you back to the Language Wellness and Identity Podcast. If you are new, I'm super glad you're here. I created this podcast actually as a compliment to my main YouTube channel, Language Travel Adoptee. And here I seek to give you the tools and perspectives you need to value the language learning process, even when it gets hard. But here we don't talk about the strategic ways to learn a language. There's more on my YouTube channel for those kinds of tips. But here on the podcast, we get down to the more vulnerable parts of the language learning experience, being vulnerable by acknowledging mistakes, but being brave anyways, building a resilient mindset for our setbacks and disappointments, giving voice to different language stories that involve trauma, not fitting in, and questions of belonging. If you are looking for an unpolished, unapologetic look into the language process, I'm here for you. And I want you to know you are not alone. Your story matters, no matter where you are in your journey. Now, while I love learning languages, I have found to continue my language journey with ease meant also tapping into my own power. This power involved learning how I can become a more resilient learner, able to withstand situations ranging from uncomfortable to outright painful experiences during the learning process. That is why I have made something super special for you because it has absolutely changed totally how I learn and think about my own language learning. If you are feeling down in your language journey currently for any reason, or you could use a pick me up whenever you need it, check out my free cheat sheet for the resilient language learning mindset. Really quick fix so that you are able to make language learning easier on yourself and your mind. Don't wait and go and check it out in the show notes below. Tell me what you think. Now let's sit back and begin. Welcome back everyone. This also happens to be the very first time that I decided to make a video podcast out of this. I usually don't script these at all just because I know that I can talk a lot more freely than for a YouTube video. So just let me know in the comments below if you want to keep on seeing the podcast in video format as well. It's already available just audio only for Spotify. I really like to show the unpolished, unapologetic look into my language learning process, how you can keep on showing up for yourself through your language learning, battling comparison. I've had a really big problems with that have really negatively affected my mental health. I'm trying to learn multiple languages. This is such a big umbrella for showing unapologetic progress, but this is my version of it. Today we're talking about whether to polyglot or not, specifically using that term versus not using the term. Should we label ourselves as that or should we label linguists, language learners, language enthusiasts? I've seen a lot of variety, but polyglot seems to be the most recognized term on the internet and it seems to gather the most clicks as well. Even five years ago, I remember sitting in my dorm room and I was with my best friend and she had asked me, what does polyglot mean? Because I was talking to her about my language aspirations. Um, I was, when I was in college, I spoke mainly German and Italian. English was my native language. So I kept on seeing these videos as YouTube got more popular and I thought, wow, polyglots are the thing to go for. This is what I should be striving for. And I told her, I want to become a polyglot. And she was like, what is polyglot? What does that even mean? So I thought about kind of shortening it to, maybe I should just talk about like being a language learner and everything. Um, I see all of these polyglots doing amazing things, learning all of these languages. And even though I want to be like them, like I guess I shouldn't label myself as that right now. As time has gone on, because my language journey, I mean, it's extended out into what now we're on eight years and counting for how long I've been actively learning languages and trying to learn languages this year, as well as last year after a really big break that I took for my mental health, um, just to provide some distance between me and language learning and make sure that my headspace was right for when you are learning multiple languages. But as time has gone on, I've really investigated this question of whether I really want to be called a polyglot or not. And I'm just speaking from my personal experience, right? If you have, friends who call themselves that, if I even know a lot of my acquaintances, friends that I've met online who do label themselves as that, they have no problem with it and I don't either. But I think just from speaking from my own experience and knowing that as I learned more languages, after I went abroad, I had probably known up to five or six that I could speak at at least a conversational level after coming back from Germany. And I thought, this is kind of weird now that people are calling me polyglot. Cause I said like before I went abroad that I wanted to be one, but now that I am considered as one by people who don't speak a lot of languages, like I'm not sure how I feel about that. And I think the reason, um, I didn't really know it at first, but after reflecting throughout all of these eight years that I have been a language learner um, actively, I guess my definition of what it means to be a language learner, we all have our different definitions, but just actively learning languages, I thought, well, that 
label really makes me feel like I have imposter syndrome. Um, and if you are interested in kind of seeing my, my trainings that I've done on imposter syndrome before, I will leave the link down below either in the show notes or in the YouTube description because it's so important for me to reconcile these feelings and help others reconcile with them as well because I know we have all been through them. If you have uh, already attended that training, thank you so much. And write down in the comments below like how helpful it was for you um, to, to really just see my process of how I process imposter syndrome and combine it with language learning and not feeling good enough, worthy enough. I think I've always just seen, it's like no matter how many languages I learn, I always just wonder, oh, do I really deserve that? And this goes into my very own personal definition of it because I was so plagued by perfectionism for years and years and years and the labels that we give ourselves as language learners, right? What does it mean to be a language learner? What does it mean to be a polyglot? What does it mean to be a language enthusiast or a linguist? Um, are polyglots really linguists? Should they know uh, linguistics? Like those, all of these labels that are floating around in the language communities that I'm really active with online. It's interesting because people's definitions of polyglot is going to be really different, right? We talk a lot about our life experiences behind the languages that we speak. That is so important for me to emphasize and keep on emphasizing because I know, well, I have had a lot of issues with my mental health, uh, with my frustrations in language learning, with my perfectionism. That is most likely why I am kind of shying away from calling myself a polyglot. And I know that I have included polyglot in some of my videos in the past that I've made, even in titles, because I thought, well, that would get the most clicks because that's what people, now that the, uh, YouTube and social media in general has gotten so much more popular. People like my best friend know exactly what a polyglot is. You don't have to uh, explain it to them like you probably would have had to eight years ago. And so I think even still, even after enacting sort of my four step process that by the way, I do talk about in the trainings, if you would like to join, even with that process, even with those coping skills, I still find it a personal preference for me to just talk about myself being a language learner. Um, and it's hard because I know that polyglot, right, that name can signal a lot of things to different people. Um, I have heard from others that it can sometimes signal like thinking you're better than someone else, um, thinking that, oh no, it just explains like how many languages you speak. You have to speak at least what, what is it like four or five? I don't know. I mean, there are so many differences between the definitions. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I have this resistance built inside me that even after reflecting on it and reflecting what that term really means for me and how I want to use it. Um, yeah, I just, I prefer to call myself a language learner. And I think that others have equal right to define and use that term however they want to. Um, and if they don't, then they have their own reasons just like I do. But I think it's just interesting to get curious about that very loaded term in some cases because we just come from so many different backgrounds. And again, there have been a range of language learners who I've met over the years that did label themselves as polyglots or they aspire to be ones. And some that I met abroad, they were really braggy. I was like, I don't want to be like them. I mean, I felt in my head that I had to because they were really good at languages from my perception. And of course, in my sort of perfectionism stage and mentality, I was like, oh, I have to be as perfect as I perceive them to be. Um, I want to be a polyglot and everything like that. So they were, they tended to be on the more braggy side, which I didn't want to be. I just wanted to be as perfect as I perceived them. And then there were others who were, I met them mostly at my home university in the United States once I came back from being abroad or even before I went abroad. And they were some of the most humble people that I had met. They were so enthusiastic about learning languages and it was all about the passion for them. Um, not that it wasn't about the passion for the people who bragged more about what they achieved, uh, but it was clearly driven from a different place of talking about languages and talking about how they learn languages, how they shared that information with the rest of the world who just wondered how they did it, how they learned so many languages in the first place. Um, so I've met both sides and Again, it's really up to us of how we define that term for ourselves. I also want to limit the use of polyglot on my channel because I really think that our experiences behind the languages we speak, again, are way more important than the number of languages that we speak or how well we speak them, if we speak them better um, than the person right next to us. And really knowing and being aware and being mindful of what we bring to the table. So I don't want to 
knowing that we all have different terms, right? I don't want to push away people who may look at me, for example, and say, oh, like she, she can function in nine languages. There's not a place for me here. Or maybe she's not addressing me when she's addressing like different sorts of language learning tips, something like that. Um, and I want to be as inclusive as possible. Even when I was learning just one or two languages and I was getting really, really good at them. And that is such an honorable thing to do, right? When you really hone in on one or two languages and get really, really good at them, just as valuable as if you decided to take a different approach and learn a lot of languages. Um, but I still felt a little bit excluded from this group of what we called polyglots or what I saw on YouTube were considered rightful polyglots. But I just, I don't want to have that on my channel, on my podcast. I really want to speak to every language learner because there are so many experiences and definitions and beautiful stories that come out of our languages and even stories that come about our, out of our languages that are not acquired through study, right? It could have to do with our family or our heritage or any sorts of big ranges of topics that are way too deep to go into for this one uh, podcast episode, but it's so important for me to place more emphasis on that. So that's why I don't tend to use polyglot a lot, um, just to make sure that everyone feels included. Um, and kind of just remembering my past self and how I used to feel like excluded from that community. Um, not that everyone will feel that way, but uh, yeah, I just think about that. And I, I want to make sure everyone, um, everyone's stories is heard behind the languages that they speak, no matter how many, um, is really valuable. It's equally valuable and uh, no matter where they're coming from. And I think I also got this sense from, for example, the Polyglot Conference. And by the way, I did speak at the newest edition of the Polyglot Conference. If you would like to have access to my whole talk, I do have it available on my Patreon, linked down below as well. You do get a members only episode one time a month, as well as a every other month vlog, sort of like behind the scenes vlog that I really like to do for my viewers who want to see a deeper look into my everyday life or an adventure that I'm having um, that has to do with languages or not, you have the power to tell me what you would like um, and Patreons get the first say for all of that. So make sure you check that out if you do want to hear my full talk that I gave. I guess in concerns with the name, right? There was a question, do I have to be a polyglot to attend this? Um, so I just want to make sure that what I'm saying is being mindful of not everyone will have the same definition of polyglot. They might feel excluded and I just want to offer that inclusivity for my channel. Write me down in the comments below what you think fits you the best. Let me know because we all have different stories to share and I'm super interested. Again, if you do want to see more video podcast episodes, then let me know in the comments below. Make sure that you stop by either Spotify, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts so you can listen to the rest of my previous episodes for the Language Wellness and Identity podcast there. Otherwise, bye guys. Thanks for tuning in.